and it, and most people don't think of it as an arrest. You know, you're getting a ticket's not being arrested, but technically, that's what it is. I mean, if I went up in to their own code and laws, it if I went up to the policeman and said, "Hey, I'm holding you here, and you can't leave." Until I'm done with whatever I want to be done with. The only lawful reason I could do that is if I was putting a citizen's arrest on him. And so it would, be, it would have to be called an arrest, you see. So being that it's an arrest, we have requirements for being arrested, right? The Fourth Amendment of the Constitution says no person or things can be seized except, which um, is, which an is basically an arrest, right? It has to be issuance of a warrant. Or that warrant, warrant. has to be supported by oath or affirmation. So... So you have a situation where you are under arrest and not free to go. In case you didn't know this, it's absolutely unlawful for, for, the, um, for the officer to search your trunk because the argument would be there's absolutely no way that you could have put anything in the trunk while you're, you know, traveling in your car. And so therefore, he would have no probable cause that anything that I mean, you could have, you know, a machine gun in your trunk, but he would have no probable cause to open your trunk because you don't have access to it and you couldn't have put it in there, you know, from the time he saw you doing something. Unless yeah. he saw you get out of the car and put something in the trunk. Or if he saw or if he was following you from home and saw you come out of the house and he put also your, has no your right lawfully owned gun in the uh, trunk. He also has no right to ask you to get out of the vehicle. There's no, no reason for him to search your vehicle unless he... Or your person. Unless your he person claims he saw you drop, you know, drugs Crack. or <laughs> a, a gun or something like that. So it would be, you know, the thing would be like, um, why? But, you know, Quote, streets and highways are established and maintained primarily for purposes of travel, not driving, and transportation by the public, and uses incidental thereto. Such travel may be for either business or pleasure. The use of the highways for purposes of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege and fundamental right of which the public and individuals cannot <clears throat> rightfully be deprived. All persons have an equal right to use them for purposes of travel by proper means with due regard for the corresponding rights of others. 25 AM Jurisprudence 456-457, Escobedo versus State of California. This was a court case in California in 1950. Then let's read California uh, Government Code 100. The sovereignty of the state resides in the people thereof and all writs and processes shall issue in their name. So now let's say, let's say that you've been arrested and the policeman has taken you into custody, most likely unlawfully, but anyway, he's taken you into custody. Kidnapped you. Let's read Penal Code of California 810. The presiding judge of the superior court in a county shall as often as is necessary designate on a schedule not less than one judge of the court to be reasonably available on call as a magistrate for the setting of orders for discharge from actual custody upon bail, the issuance of search warrants, and for such other matters as may be the magistrate pardon me, as may by the magistrate be deemed appropriate. In every county, there has to be a judge on call, right? Shall be, has to be one judge on call 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. So, we go to Government Code 26601. The sheriff shall arrest and take before the nearest magistrate for examination all persons who attempt to commit or who have committed a public offense. Now the definition of public offense is the same as crime and um, the definition of crime is a violation of the penal code. Now most people think of crime as hey Bob hit uh, Henry with a with a baseball bat. That's a crime. Well, it's only a crime if it violates the penal code. If it doesn't violate the penal code, guess what? It's not a crime. What would it be then? A trespass. Exactly. It'd be a trespass. So it'd be a trespass 
under common law if you hit me with a baseball bat. But it would be a crime if, if hitting me with a baseball bat wasn't a penal code violation, you couldn't call it a crime it's only, or a public offense. A public offense and a crime de are defined by being in violation of the penal code. So this is the uh, interconnected, twisted pretzel system that uh, these people have created. And again, uh, in terms of their creation, it being color of law, not applicable to the people, but uh, applicable to only those who volunteer into it. So it, they created it, it applies to them. And then the only way in which it can apply to us is if we volunteer into it. And since they know that if we are told what it means to volunteer into it, there's no way we're going to volunteer into it. So what's their solution? Point a gun at you and say, do it or else. Uh, we had just covered the government code 26601, and now we're going to go on to penal code 688, that no person charged with a public offense may be subjected before conviction to any more restraint than is necessary for his detention to answer the charge, like jail or bail. And on to Penal Code 689, no person can be convicted of a public offense unless by verdict of a jury accepted and recorded by the court by a finding of the court in a case where a jury has been waived or by a plea of guilty, jury mandatory and criminal unless waived. Now if you go to court today, you'll see uh, lots and lots of people being um, making deals in the court. And so everything's voluntary. Everything's voluntary until you don't consent to it. They're the ones that are making the complaint, so they're the ones that are responsible for proving the claim. And for but paying since you're, expenses. But since you're guilty until proven innocent, I guess that's not the case. Guilty till proven innocent is a form of law. It's admiralty jurisdictional type law. It's the law uh, at, at war. You're, it, it's war law generally at sea, otherwise maritime, which is uh, on the land so we have by the shore. Penal Code 807, a magistrate is an officer having power to issue a warrant for the arrest of a person charged with a public offense. So when you're arrested, by the officer at the side of the road and given the ticket, because that is an arrest, do they have the power to issue a warrant for the arrest or are they doing a warrantless arrest? Penal Code 871 says, if after hearing the proofs it appears either that no public offense has been committed or that there is not sufficient cause to believe the defendant guilty of a public offense, the magistrate shall order the complaint dismissed and the defendant to be discharged by an endorsement on the dep depositions and statement signed by the magistrate to the following effect, quote, there being no sufficient cause to believe the within named A.B. guilty, that's the individual, guilty of the offense within mentioned, I order that the complaint be dismissed and that, th that he or she shall be discharged. Now, one problem we have with that is that how many times has somebody who has been charged ever gone to um, before the magistrate to, to determine whether there's, a, whether there's probable cause? It's called a probable cause hearing. You have the right to demand a probable cause hearing immediately upon being arrested. Let's say, well, you know, in a traffic ticket you're not going to do that because nobody's going to want to go before the judge immediately. However, if you were arrested for um, <coughs> drunk in public, or some penal code violation, I want to go to the magistrate immediately. I want to see the judge right now to determine whether there's actually a, a reason for my arrest, you know, whether, the, the, whether there's enough evidence to support my arrest, because I don't want to go down to booking and have to bail out and whatnot. I want to go before the magistrate. And most of the time, in fact, all the time, they just deny you. They, didn't, they violate your rights, and one of the reasons they can get away with violating your rights is because if you will notice in this page here, it says that, you know, that, that the sheriff shall take you to the uh, nearest magistrate for examination. Does it say that it's a misdemeanor if he doesn't? I mean, what's the, what's the penalty for not doing it? 
This right. is always the way it is. When you do something, there's a penalty if you, if you get charged with it. 